Nowadays, it seems like international title holders are hopping from one pageant to the other, and I think it's finally time for us to talk about it, shall we? So former Miss Earth 2016 Catherine Espin took the pageant community by storm when she announced that she will be joining Miss Universe Ecuador. This comes as a huge surprise because Catherine Espin serves not only as a former Miss Earth title holder but also as the current national director for Miss Earth Ecuador. And as you can imagine, this news has gathered the attention of people on social media with the opinions being pretty polarized. Some people are praising Catherine for following her dreams and going after the things that she wants to accomplish in life, while others are calling her greedy and disrespectful towards the organization that believed in her and gave her an opportunity initially. But now let's put the shock value aside and let's really ask ourselves, is this really surprising? She is not the first and definitely not the last title holder who will compete after they already achieved an international title. But for some reason, everyone is giving her a really hard time about it. But anyways, just last year, Antonia Porcel, Miss Supernational 2019, decided to risk it all when she joined Miss Universe Thailand, where she managed to end up with the national title. That was definitely a huge victory, and thanks God, Antonia was able to live up to the expectations, because imagine going from being an international title holder to not even winning your national contest. <laughs> It is also fair to say that ultimately Antonia's efforts paid off as she ended as a first runner-up at Miss Universe 2023 in El Salvador. Yours truly was there, so I was able to see it with my own eyes. And yes, of course, this was not the ideal outcome that Antonia was hoping for because she was going for that blue crown. However, a first runner-up placement is still very honorable in my opinion. So. This was kind of a success story. Let's rewind even further to the time when Lara Duta decided to join Miss Universe after being crowned Miss Intercontinental. It is very fair to say that Lara Duta is easily the most successful beauty queen ever because she managed to obtain, I don't want to say two major, but two really important titles in her lifetime. This is something that no other queen has accomplished up until this day. And yes, of course, a lot of you are going to say, yeah, Miss Intercontinental is not really a major pageant. I know for today's standards, they're not really that relevant. There's not much hype. There's not much going on with Miss Intercontinental. But back in the day, Miss Intercontinental was easily one of those really influential pageants. So for Lara Duta to accomplish this, it was indeed a major deal. Of course, we're gonna talk about international title holders changing pageants without mentioning Valerie Hernandez, who won Miss International in 2014 for Puerto Rico. If you guys remember, Valerie tried to join Miss Universe Puerto Rico in 2018. However, she ended up pulling out for personal reasons. Or I think it might have been mostly for contractual reasons. So my point is, why have we praised and supported other women and now we're giving such a hard time to Catherine Aspin? Well, let's look at the pros and the cons. First of all, Catherine Espin is joining Miss Universe El Salvador because she can. She literally can. And one thing that you guys don't know is that for the most part, these international pageants, these major pageants, contractually require the title holders to never be able to compete again. Why? Because now you are a part of the legacy of the organization. You are going to represent them even after your reign is done and you are part of their history. So they don't want you going around getting other titles and kind of like bringing other people in the mix that they're not supposed to be there. It's like when you have a family gathering and then you start bringing like your friends friends we don't really want that right i know for a fact that as of today some of the major organizations include this disclosure on their contracts miss international does it miss world does it miss universe does it but does miss earth really do it well of course i had to go and ask some of my girlies previous title holders of Miss Earth, and a few of them have confirmed that there is no disclosure on the Miss Earth contract requiring them to never be able to compete again. So quite literally, Catherine Espin is competing because she can. Contractually, she was never asked to never join again. Of course, a lot of people would assume that out of delicadeza, out of respect for the organization, she wouldn't compete again because she is quite literally an international title holder, but that doesn't mean that she cannot have other dreams and aspirations that she might be able to fulfill alongside other organizations, right? We can all remember the similar situation happening with Miss Supernational and Antonia Porcel when Antonia announced that she was going to join Miss Universe Thailand. There was kind of a debate around it, like why is this happening? And a lot of people were saying, well, Miss Super is not really one of the top four pages in the world, but you know, she's still an international title title holder technically, but the reality was that back in the day, there was no requirement on the contract for Antonia to not be able to compete again. So she got an opportunity and she went for it. Can you blame her? Nowadays, things are different. 
both on the contract of Miss and Mr. Supernational, it is required that if you accept to be their title holder, you are never able to compete again. It's part of the contract, you are giving away those rights, and that is just part of what it is. Recently, a lot of people have been pulling clips of Catherine Espin when she was crowned as Miss Earth, especially in an interview with Boy Abund, and she was asked if she will go for Miss Universe or Miss Earth, to which she answered, Miss Earth. Did you originally dream of becoming Miss Universe? Miss Earth, you will say- Guys, it was all a lie, she lied. Okay, I get it, but at the same time, this was eight years ago. Women are allowed to evolve. And we also have to acknowledge that Miss Earth is a very specific pageant. It's one of the biggest pageants out there, one of the most purposeful pageants out there, incredible advocacy, incredible platform, but it's also very specific. It's towards the environment. If Catherine Espin wanted to do other things in terms of empowerment, in terms of whatever, I think that perhaps another opportunity, another platform would have been a better option. I don't necessarily question the fact that she was really invested in the environment back then and that she is still, even up until now, I mean, she's quite literally the national director for Miss Earth Ecuador. Perhaps her interests have simply widened or shifted or she wants to continue her environmental advocacies alongside other type of advocacies. Can you blame her? This brings me to my next point, and as much as some people will not like it, Miss Universe is Miss Universe. The Miss Universe organization provides such a huge platform that I believe sometimes people don't really understand the influence and the reach that you can have when you become a Miss Universe. Sometimes you don't even have to win the international pageant just to gather a huge amount of following. Let's talk about a recent example, Miss Jane Deepika who represented Nepal last year at Miss Universe. Went into the competition with only a couple of thousand of followers and left the competition after three weeks with over 300,000 followers. Just imagine how many eyes are on you the opportunities and the reach that you can have with your message. This type of visibility is something that very few pageants in the world can offer, or I would say no other pageant in the world can offer. Another reality is that Miss Universe, because of all of the attention and all of the visibility, often offers a lot of career opportunities to the girls, especially if they're trying to venture into being entrepreneurs, show business, anything that has to do with empowerment or like coaching and this type of careers. Miss Universe is a great platform for all of these things. And the reality is that what Catherine does as a national director is very close with the type of industry that she works in. So I can definitely see her competing at Miss Universe Ecuador, potentially winning that platform and going to the international pageant as being a great opportunity to continue growing her business. So once again, can you blame her? And let's stop pretending. A lot of people also join Miss Universe because it brings a lot of popularity. Girls become influencers, they become known on social media, there's a lot of attention on them, at least for a year, at least for a couple of months. So a lot of people like the attention. They just wanna be the center of it and they just go for it. I'm not saying that this is Catherine's case, but it might be one of the reasons, one of the motivations why you know she might want to put herself out there. It's a plus, most definitely. Now, on the other hand, I also have to be honest and acknowledge that I kind of feel bad for the Miss Earth organization because as I said earlier, this is one of the biggest pageants in the world, one of the most unproblematic pageants in the world, one of the most specific pageants in the world. They just truly stay on their lane. They don't bother anyone, they don't fight with anyone, they just worry about the environment and giving the girlies the best possible experience. So it does feel as a little bit of a low blow when one of the international title holders who is supposed to be carrying the legacy and spreading the message decides to go elsewhere. Why? It can come across as a little bit disrespectful, but I'm able to get past that. But the reality is that once you join a new competition, people don't really refer to you with your former title. They don't necessarily remember what you did before, but what you have done recently. Who refers to Lara Duta as Miss Intercontinental? Nobody. Who refers to Antonia Porcel as Miss Supernational? Nobody. So putting yourself back in the waters after you're already one of the international title holders of one of the biggest pageants in the world is going to cost you that title, whether the organization endorses you and supports you publicly or not. Not a lot of people will remember that. Indirectly, these international title holders are using the name that they already built for themselves and the prestige that they have and just the fact that they are international title holders to kind of promote themselves into these new platforms. I mean, Last time I checked for Miss Catherine Aspin, she still has the title of Miss Earth everywhere on the page. So I don't know. I just really don't like the idea of an international title holder kind of like 
lowering themselves to the level of like starting from scratch at a, like a national level what will happen if you don't win at your national level what if you stay there you go from being like a miss earth to like an unplaced miss universe ecuador candidate i don't know there's just something with me that doesn't resonate with it it doesn't make sense so again just pulling back a little bit i can understand both sides but i also think it's a huge risk for the title holder they are also putting at risk the relationship the trust um and you know the bridges that were built with these international organizations that initially gave you a title gave you a name when you were nobody uh they traveled you around the world they helped you to network they literally gave you a franchise so it's kind of a touchy subject personally i have very mixed feelings about this so anyways let me know you guys how do you feel in the comment section down below do you believe that international title holders should be able to apply and join national pageants or join even international pageants once again do you think it's inspiring and uplifting or greedy and disrespectful i'll be reading you in the comment section down below thank you guys for watching and i'll see you on the next one bye now